Welcome to our Good Friday service. It is a quiet service. There will be no benediction at the end. For when Jesus breathed his last breath, he said, Tetelestai, it is finished. On Sunday, the benediction will come again. Today, we're quiet on the hill on Calvary. Pray with me. Lord, on this day we stand in silence as we come to that hill on Calvary, a lonely place, a place of brokenness, but also a place of hope. For on that hill, Lord, you died. And in the moment you died, you took all of our sin and all of our brokenness And as you nailed it to the cross, you washed it all away and you took away that IOU that stood between us and you and you took it away for good. And all of that because Jesus died. We stand before you, Lord Jesus, the King of kings and the Lord of lords as we remember what you did. In your amazing and precious name we pray. Amen. I'd like to read with you from the Gospel of Mark, uh, chapter 15, verses 33 to 37. At noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And at three in the afternoon, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lema sabachthani, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of those standing near heard this, they said, Listen, he's calling Elijah. And someone ran and filled a sponge with wine vinegar, put it on a staff and offered it to Jesus to drink. Now leave him alone. Let's see if Elijah comes to take him down, he said. And with a loud cry, Jesus breathed 
his last. My God, my God, why? Why have you forsaken me? Uh, words of fear, uh, of terror, of anguish. My God. Why? I think this must be the most gut-wrenching why ever asked in the history of this world. And it comes there on a hill, on a cross, from the lips of the Son of God himself. My God, why have you forsaken me? I want you to notice a few things in this why question that Jesus asks, because I think sometimes we can get that wrong. When Jesus asks why, he is expressing his helplessness to help himself in this situation. He can't do a thing about that. And he cries out to the only one that he knows that will be able to help. He cries to his Father, the living God. When Jesus cries, why? It's not because he doubts God. Quite the opposite. He cries out because he believes in God and that God is there. When Jesus cries, why? It's not a cry of unbelief in the power of God to, to help, in the power of God to set him free. When Jesus cries, help, and why? It is not a question of rejecting God. When Jesus cries, why? It is a cry of fear, of being isolated, away from the presence of God, away from the only one that can save him from this which is in front of him, a it's a cry of fear of being taken away from the presence of the living God. But here's the thing. Did you notice that the why question is preceded by twice? My God. My God. In asking the why, Jesus, feeling isolated, forsaken by God, does not in that moment decide to turn his back on God, to walk away from God, and not to be with God anymore. Quite the opposite. He calls, my God, my God. My God, the one that I know who is always present in my life. My God, the one who has always cared for me. My God, the one who loves me compassionately and who sent his son into this world for me. Who sent me to come into this world. My God, help me, Father. My God, the one who saves, the one who cares, the one who is there. The my God prayer, followed why by the why of faith, is a prayer of hope in the God that saves. And in his God forsakenness, when he cries out this prayer, it is a reminder to each one of us what this would mean for us, what this cost him. Because it started already there in that upper room at that table when the Lord Jesus took that bread and he broke that bread to pieces. And he said, this is my body that is broken for you so that when you come before God, you will not be forsaken or broken like this ever. I'm going to do this for you. And when he poured that wine and he said, this is the new covenant in my blood that will be shed for you. A covenant that will be made in my blood when I am forsaken by God to remind you that when you drink this God will never forsake you ever again. My God, 
My God, why have you forsaken me? Carries within it not just this cry for help, but also a cry of hope. Let me explain that. What happens here started way back when in the Old Testament. In the book of Leviticus, chapter 16, we read of what is written in Hebrew as Yom Kippur. Yom means day and Kippur means atonement, which comes from that seat on the Ark of the Covenant, which is called the Kippuret, that, that place of making atonement, where once a year, once a year only, the high priest was allowed to go in, not looking, go in and make atonement first for his sins with the blood of the bull, but then go in with the blood of a, of a goat ram and pour that on that atonement seat to wash away the sins of the people as God looks at them, to make atonement for their sin. Let me tell you how this worked. And I'm just giving you the Coles notes. Go read the whole story in Leviticus 16. After he'd done atonement for his own sins, the high priest would come out and there would be two goat rams that would be brought to him that were without blemish. Perfect lambs, rams. And then they would have lots and they would cast the lots. On the one lot it said, for the Lord. And on the other lot it says, for Azazel, or as we translate it, the scapegoat. And the one ram that was cast a lot and got the lot that said, for the Lord, that goat would be slaughtered and the blood would be taken, as I have just told you, and the high priest would go in and make atonement for the sins of God's people because blood had to be shed and the lamb, the ram, had to die for their sins once a year. But then comes the second part of this. Then comes the ram that was called the scapegoat. And the high priest would come and he would lay his hands upon this ram's head and he would pray all the sins of all of God's people unto this ram. And then someone was given the job to take this ram out to the farthest part of the wilderness. And there in the wilderness, this ram would be sent into the wilderness alone to carry away the sins of the people alone to go die in the wilderness. Go. Run, goat. Run. And the people are relieved. God is appeased and the scapegoat is all alone carrying the sins of the people. And there on that hill of the skull, the scapegoat of God would carry all of our sins. Every lie that was ever told, every promise that was ever broken, Every dark deed that was done in darkness. Every sin ever committed. On the unblemished scapegoat of God. Alone. Forsaken by people. And forsaken by God. And when he cries, my God, my God, the father turns away. Run, goat. Run. And he will carry those sins for you, for me, alone in the wilderness. Run, goat. Run. But I said, this cry carries within it a cry of, of help. 
but also a cry of hope. Because here's the thing. In that moment when the father just closes his ears and turns away from the son, and the father hears the cry of God's children who have been washed in the blood of that scapegoat, who have been redeemed through the life of that scapegoat of God. When God hears our cries and our pleas as he turns away from his son and closes his ears, that's the moment when God turns to us and God opens his arms and God runs to his children. And in my mind's eye, I can see when we cry, my God, my God, why? I can see the tears well in Jesus' eyes as he looks at us. And as he wipes that tear away, because he's been there. He's done that. He's cried that cry. But in that same moment, as he, as he wipes those tears away with those nail-scarred hands, with the Father, he reaches out. And he picks me up. Because you see, when he cried, why? He was forsaken. So that I now do not have to cry that. But I can say, my Father, my Father who is in heaven, hallowed, holy, gracious, loving, caring, listening is your name. Your kingdom come in my life. Your will be done also in the why moments. Year on earth as it is in heaven. My Father, give me today my daily bread and help me to forgive those who have trespassed against me as you have forgiven all my sins when the scapegoat cried, My God, my God. And lead me to places where I will not be tempted. Deliver me from the evil one who will cry and who will yell and who will try to turn me away from you. For yours is the kingdom. Yours is the power. And yours is the glory. Forever. And ever. Amen. The cross has the final word. The cross has the Cross